I'm going to invite the kids up front. Or anybody that wants to be a kid. <laughs> Boys, I get their attention. <laughs> Smile. Probably wondering what I'm doing. Well, hold out your hand. Hold out your hand. There we go. There we go. Boy, that was quick. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is that enough? Really? Candy's candy? Boy. <laughs> I have to congratulate your mom. <laughs> was that enough? That was enough? Yeah. Was that enough? Yes. Really? That's all you want? One? You're good with that? I should have talked to you guys before. Let me ask you, what's that? Oh, she took sugar out of the house. Oh, and then I, what do I do? I give you sugar. <laughs> She'll probably calling later. <laughs> So, why do you think I gave you one? Is Jesus enough? Do we need anything else? No. Do we need to uh, do something? It's okay, you can eat up here, I gave it to you. Do we need to do something to earn Jesus' love? I see the look on your face as soon as I finish that sentence. <laughs> do we? What do you think? Can you earn the love of Jesus? Yeah? yeah? Can you earn the love of your parents? Yeah. What about when you mess up? Have you ever broken anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A phone? Mm -hmm. What about a window? I have. Broke a window, broke a door window. Um, that was when they used glass that... And I got boo-boo right You got a boo-boo right there. Yeah. And you know something? All those mistakes, some of them were, I don't know if they were mistakes or accidents or what do you want to call them. I guess if you're hitting a ball right straight towards the window, it's, you know, it's going to break. But my parents still loved me. When you make mistakes... When you screw up, your mom still love you? When you mess up, do your parents and grandparents still love you? Yeah. yeah. Jesus does too. That's why Jesus, he, he's enough for us. Yeah, and God up in the sky. Yeah, God up in the sky. Cool, huh? You want to say a little prayer? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you lead. Why? <laughs> I love that. Why? Dear Jesus, thank you for being enough for us. Thank you for giving us the faith. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, hang on. Because if I have open candy, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm not supposed to eat it. There you go. You thought I was just going to give you a one. What's that? Oh, there's no sugar in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you believe that one, I'll sell you some swamp land. But in all reality, we should have bought that swamp land. <laughs> it's worth a lot of money nowadays. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. The Old Testament text is kind of interesting.
You know who Jezebel is? Do you know what a Jezebel is? <laughs> You've heard that phrase? <laughs> you know, you look at this text and the Old Testament text, and you look at the, the epistle, and it's interesting. They have become callous, and had given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. The Gentiles. This Old Testament text. They were practicing things that would make you more than blush. <laughs> Do a little research when you get home. So it was not a good thing. Elijah had had it. Yahweh had just given him what any faithful prophet would call his greatest triumph. At Elijah's request, the Lord had just sent fire from heaven to show Israel who was God. Not the Baal and Asherah. Of those weakling prophets who couldn't raise their own gods. If they had a megaphone or a telephone, a cell phone, internet. But Yahweh the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The people had all shouted. 1 Kings 18, verse 39. Then they rounded up and killed those 850 pagan prophets. At least for one day, Elijah was king of the prophets. And then it's like, okay, not so fast, Elijah. Said the wicked king, king, queen Jezebel. By tomorrow I'm going to see that you're as dead as my beloved prophets. And so what does Elijah do? <laughs> he books it out of town. <laughs> it's like I'm out of here. Out of the country. Out of the neighboring country. Out into the desert. And when he stops and catches his breath, it is enough now, O oh Lord, take away my life, in verse 4. I've had enough. Look at it from the prophet's point of view. He has endured years of uh, deprivation, isolation, hiding, worry, hunger, Getting by on meager rations, knowing he is hunted. To everyone else, he seems strong, wise, successful, but to himself, he seems a failure. And so he says, Enough. This is how he begins his prayer to God Enough. You are no Elijah. You know how he felt? <laughs> Can you imagine how he felt? Obviously, as good Christians, we always think, well, no, you can't. You can't think that. But we do. God, when are you going to stop? When are things going to turn around?
to all those sitting around you. I'm sure you too appear confident, put together, responsible, much like Elijah. But how do you see yourself Now, how do you see yourself after going through turmoil, death, sickness, pain? We're all trying to get by. You know, every single day, I'll go out to the mailbox. There's all these little leaflet things. Not leaflets, they're, they spend a lot of money on these things. If you're registered one party or the other, you get lambasted with them. We got people fighting within the party. We got, we got a board, uh, school board election in, in Collier County. And you got two people on the school board, and they're like throwing dirt at each other in all these pamphlets. And I'm like, really? It's a school board. Not to put the school board down or anything, but I mean, it's not like the governor race or a senator's race. I've kind of had it with some of that stuff, and I've just been ripping them up as I throw them out. I don't want to see it anymore. And I'm sure you feel the same way with certain things. When the pain comes, when the death comes, when the suffering comes, when the illness comes. God, I've had enough. Almost sounds like a country music song, doesn't it? Much of the music that we uh, have on the radio expresses this theme. I've had enough. Lost love, loneliness, the death of your dog. (laughs) Something about a pickup truck. (laughs) The rest on your pickup truck. All show up as a list of miseries. But country music didn't invent that type of song. Listen to the complaints of a songwriter and a 17th century, it is enough. Therefore, Lord, take my spirit from here to the spirits of Zion. There is enough of the misery that crushes me. There is enough of the cross that almost breaks my back. How heavy, O God, how hard is the burden. It is enough. This song is, uh, it's called, let's see if I can remember how to pronounce this. It's in, it's in German, so Klaus, you can correct me. Est ist, where'd it go now? Genug. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. You ever heard of that? It is enough, Lord. If it please thee, my Jesus, come. World, good night. I go to the heavenly house with a heart full of joy. My sorrows remain below. It's a German hymn. Literally, it is enough. Taken from the very words of Elijah and his cry out to God. But when John Sebastian Bach wrote the cantata, On the last verse of this hymn, he turned to this cry of despair into a hymn of hope. Longing for the Savior. Today, the hymn does not appear in our our hymnal. Sorry. But the tune does. It's 468. I am content. My Jesus ever lives. You ever hear that? Mm -hmm. 
I am content my Jesus ever lives. Elijah was sustained by the angel of the Lord in the desert. He was given enough to go on. Although his problems were not immediately taken away. Can you relate to that? (laughs) We're given enough. My grace is sufficient for you. The fulfillment of God's promise that Elijah longed to see was reserved for you. You may experience the same sense of despair. You may have the same long list of troubles. Mind, body, soul. Anybody got problems with any of those? Anybody got problems with multiple of those? (laughs) Jesus never said it is enough. He never said, whoop, I'm done. Get me off this cross. I can't take it anymore. Until he indeed had enough, he had enough to pay for all our sins, taking them to the cross. And that was enough. The work of saving us is finished. It's complete. Like Elijah, Jesus has fed you with bread that sustains you. And I'm not, just, I'm not just talking Holy Communion, because we don't have Holy Communion today. But I'm not just talking that. I'm talking his word. Whether it's in here, whether it's in a phone, whether you hear it spoken, whether you hear it in a Bible study, he sustains us. Not just ordinary bread and water, but his body and his blood given up for us, which are the food of healing and life. And so our complaint of despair is transformed into a song of resurrection victory. Easter every single day. You just might not have the candy. I am content. I shall be free. Awaken from the dead, arising glorious evermore to be with you. My living head, the chains that hold my body sever. Then shall my soul rejoice forever. I am content. I am content. That's verse 4 of hymn 468. We may tell God, I've had enough. But Jesus comes to give us more than enough. Elijah, the great prophet, cried out in despair, Enough! (laughs) Now you may also cry out to God, It is enough. I am content. Amen.